Okay, uh, so the purpose of this demonstration is to give you a general overview of shoulder examination. I'll just point out the bony landmarks first and then we'll go through a general uh, examination and then concentrate on rotator cuff pathology uh, and impingement. Okay, so first of all, the bony landmarks here, the clavicle lies at the front of the shoulder here, the medial end of, the, of that is the sternoclavicular joint, and if you follow the clavicle out, you come, may come to a small bump or depression there, which is the acromioclavicular joint. You can feel the edges of the acromion around here, and enjoy if you turn around. Okay? The, the spine of the scapula is here, and then the inferior border of the scapula is there. When you're looking at the shoulder, first of all, you can look at the back of the shoulder looking for any muscle wasting, any asymmetry, and a more accurate way of looking for muscle wasting is if you feel the spine of the scapula, walk your fingers forward to feel the supraspinatus, and you can check for any difference between the two. Fingers on the spine of the scapula again, and move your fingers down, feeling for any wasting of the infraspinatus. Turn on, Charlie. Okay. So, looking for tenderness, I always start with feeling the sternoclavicular joint first. Walk your fingers along the clavicle to the AC joint. The AC joint, it's quite common to have some degenerative change and it's not unusual to have a small amount of tenderness there. Uh, so they're the main points really to look for tenderness. You can look for tenderness of the biceps, uh, long head of biceps tendon, but often, even when you feel it in yourself, it can be quite uncomfortable, but it may indicate some long head of biceps inflammation. Next, we would move on to range of movement in the shoulder. Uh, I always start by showing the patient what I want them to do. So, try if you could face me. Okay, I'd like you to lift your arms forward, all the way up as far as you'll go, and back down again. And all the time, we're trying to know any differences between the two sides. And now lift your arms to the side, all the way up, as far as you'll go, back down again. Okay. Dig your elbows into your side, and turn your arms out like that. Okay. Now put your right hand all the way up your back, as far as you can go. Okay. And if you could just turn around and face the wall. And you can record how far he gets his thumb up his back at the spinal level. Okay, relax that down. Repeat it with your other side, all the way up. Okay. And you can compare the two sides. Just relax down again. Okay, and face me. Okay, so Jai has a normal range of movement in his shoulder. If there was any restriction in his active range of movement, so for example, if Jai could only get his arm to here, then what I would then do is gently, without causing him too much pain, try and lift it passively and see what the passive range is. Often in someone with a rotator cuff tear, they will get to around 60 degrees of forward elevation abduction, but if they've not, they haven't developed any stiffness, you may be able to get a full range. Okay, Next, if we move on to testing the rotator cuff muscles themselves, um, the first muscle I start with the supraspinatus. The supraspinatus muscle lies just above the spinous, spine of the scapula and assists in abducting the arm like so. So examining the supraspinatus, the arm needs to be in line with the scapula, so about 30 degrees forward flexion, at about 60 degrees of abduction, with the arm internally rotated. And I compare both sides, so I will do the same with the other side. Ask the patient to push up while you push down. So push up as hard as you can and stop me pushing down. Okay, good, relax. This is quite a sensitive way to look for weakness. Uh, often, you can test it down here, but if they have wrist or elbow pathology, that may be difficult. So I always try excluding the other joints uh, and examining above the elbow. Relax now. So to test infraspinatus, patient needs to flex their elbows to 90 degrees, externally rotate as far as they can go, bring them in a few degrees, 
then ask them to hold their arm in that position. So stop me pushing in as hard as you can. Okay, good, and that's testing infraspinatus. The other muscle uh, in the rotator cuff is the subscapularis. The subscapularis acts as an internal rotator uh, of the shoulder uh, and lies deep within the shoulder on the anterior aspect of the scapula and attaches the front of the shoulder on the lesser tuberosity. Okay, so the way we test subscapularis is asking the patient to internally rotate um, and ask them to lift their arm off their back. Okay, so if you could turn around and face that way. So if I hold it there for you, if you could keep it there, John, stop me pushing down as hard as you can. Okay, and, and there he has no weakness. Let's relax now, I'll face the camera again. The other way of testing subscapularis is to ask the patient to internally rotate at the front of their body. So if you could put that hand on my hand there and push against your shoulder as hard as you can. Good. Right. And the third way is the belly press test. So ask the patients to put their hands on their tummy, bring their elbows forward, and if you push backwards on their elbow, if there's any weakness doing that, that may indicate some sub subscapularis pathology. If the patient has pain on the anterior aspect of the shoulder, uh, and um, you need to test long head biceps, there are two ways of doing this. One is speeds test, asking the patient to lift the arms forward against resistance. And you do this by standing in front of the patient, if you could keep your arms straight, keep your elbows straight, and push forward as hard as you can. Good. And if the patient experiences pain, you need to inquire where the pain is. The other way of testing long head of biceps is asking the patient to flex their elbow to 90 degrees, hold their hand, if you could hold my hand tight, and turn your palm over so it's palm up. Okay. Thank you. And if there is biceps, long head of biceps pathology, then they would experience pain on the anterior aspect of their shoulder. So uh, to test for subacromial impingement, um, I asked the patient to lift their arm to 90 degrees, ask them to relax their arm as much as possible and let you take the weight. So if you hold it there for me, John, and relax, let me take the weight. And passive internal and external rotation. Usually any impingement pain is reproduced on the internal rotation part of that movement. You can do it in various positions of uh, the shoulder and ask the patient if it causes them pain. Okay, relax now. Thank you. If there are signs of AC joint pathology or the patient complains of pain on the superior aspect of the shoulder, as well as tenderness around the AC joint itself, you can do the scarf test, which is if you put the patient's arm across their chest like this and just gently push and ask if that causes pain. The scarf test is only positive if the patient points to the area of the AC joint as a source of the pain. Okay. Always finish a shoulder examination by examining the neck. Uh, as a quick screening tool, do a full range of movement assessment. If the patient gives any history of neurological symptoms, then a full neurological examination of the upper limb should be done as well.